I have with me Stuart Childerley and Ben Childerley, uh, two very accomplished Etchells sailors. Um, but firstly, I'll introduce myself. My name is Andy Rice, sailing uh, journalist based in the UK. And so I'm going to ask uh, these two sailors some questions uh, about the world of Etchells racing. Um, let's start with you, Stewie. Uh, I mean, you, you've been around the block a few times, uh, <laughs> been to uh, a couple of Olympic Games as, as a sailor, and, and more recently you, you were a principal race officer for the Finns at Tokyo 2020. Um, but you keep on coming back to the Etchells, spending your own hard-earned money on coming back to the Etchells. So d just briefly tell us why that is. Well, it... It, it's Ben's inheritance, really, that we're spending. Um, we, we've, um, or oh, Ben and Abby, I should say. Sorry, um, we've we've got um, the actual worlds coming up next year in September, and I, I love the boat. It's a very um, pure type of sailing. Um, it's all about teamwork, getting the best out of pretty much the same equipment. Um, and getting around the course tactically, smartly. So that's the attraction for me. Um, we've, we've obviously got a good pedigree in terms of we've done, done an, a good number of years sailing um, in the Etchells. Uh, previously with um, a dear friend, Simon Russell, Fumesy, who's uh, passed away, um, and also Roger Marino and Roger's um, dropping in and out of the team at the moment, along with Andy Hemmings. But uh, the attraction of doing the Worlds in Cows um, and then the programme with the class, um, we go to Miami for the following World Championships and then Perth. Um, so it's, it's three really nice years of um, good venues and, and hopefully great racing. Great. Thank you for that, Stewie. Now, Ben, uh, uh, your dad's just done a load of name dropping there of of all the great sailors that that he's raced with over the years, and uh, now you've got some big shoes to fill. Um, so uh, just tell us what what it's it, what's it been like so far sailing with your dad. And just unmute your microphone first. That's it. We got you. Yeah, That's it's right. not bad. It's not bad. Dragging the old man around the course is actually quite fun at some points. Yeah, so so it's, it's it's already reached that point, has it? You know, he was he was probably dragging you around the course a few years ago, but uh, but <laughs> but now increasingly the the traffic's in the other direction. <laughs> At some points, yes, yeah, <laughs> no, it's good. It's, it's honestly, I've watched Dad go away so much off to these lovely places, sailing and doing everything, but to actually join them and and then do well together and be a good team, they're it's pretty fun for both of us, I think. It's and, just... and he, I hear he's a bit of a taskmaster as well. You know, I mean, I, I've I've stood on a, a race committee boat with him, and that's scary enough. Let alone when there's a race, <laughs> there's a race on the line. So, uh, so who who hands out um, the the most abuse to the other? Which which way is the traffic there? Oh, uh, we've had a couple of incidents. It's, it's been actually both ways. There's been a couple of incidents. Where, where it's um, yeah, we've had to either quiet one down and and get the boat moving again or um, refocus. And who's the one that that does the refocusing? Who's the one that says right? It's it, it's it's time to get our heads together again. I try to. Yeah, <laughs> ben, ben Ben's normally the 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 one that would say, "Come on, let's keep going," in in terms of get the job done. Um, and we're all trying, you know, when, when we're in the boat, we're all trying very hard. Um, and, and it's, you know, any, any team, we're, we're learning to sail all the time. Every time we go out there, we're learning something different, either about the boat and the, the new setup that we're sailing with now, or, you know, with each other. And um, it's, it's a fun learning experience. And, yeah, I'm very fortunate to be able to sail with Ben and Abby occasionally. Um, and, and be able to share my own experiences, but also they're accomplished sailors as well. So you, I have to listen to them as well, which 
uh, comes you know easily at, you know on, on several occasions you know they they got some really good input to to what we're doing and we're quietly developing the roles of each each of us in the boat to to get it to where we we believe it should so ben you know is quietly sort of developing that tactic tactical role so therefore he's he's having more input to to what the boat's doing and what we should be doing as a group uh, so um, i'll ask both of you i'll start with you first Stuart. Uh, what does abby bring to the party your daughter when you sail with her <laughs> um Ab abby's great she's um she, occasionally when we want to go sailing and and andy's not available um we we take abby and as she joins us she helms that gives me an opportunity to sit in the middle um which i've done a fair bit of sailing in the middle of etchels and ben shuffles forward to the bow um he would get onto the foredeck a lot easier than i um so that's a natural position for us and uh but what it does it, it gets one, the three of us sailing together and competing is, is great. Uh, two, it also gives us a really good opportunity to understand each other's roles or different roles in the boat. And, and that's, that's really important for learning about the boat. Yeah, and um, what about you, Ben, when your uh, sister steps on board and she's, she's holding the tiller, she points the boat in the direction that she wants to and you're up on, on the bow. How, how does that work for you? Um, well, I haven't fallen off yet. <laughs> Is that a comment on fine. her steering? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say so. I think she'd say otherwise. No, she, um, one thing she did bring to the team was a pink cradle for the trailer. Fantastic. And that is one thing that stands out in the boat park. So now we've got a nice little pink trailer standing out in cows, which is actually, in hindsight, it's, it's quite a good move. Well, it makes it nice and easy to find, and, and none of those alpha males are going to steal that trailer, are they? So, you know, <laughs> um, that, that, no. there's actually quite a lot of sense in that. So, um, yeah, so well done to Abby for, for coming up yeah. with that scheme. And, um, yeah, so, so Ben, what, what does um, sailing with a girl, um, especially your sister, how, how does that change the, um, the sort of the emotional setup on the boat, would you say? Yeah. Um. I occasionally have to defuse a couple of situations between Dad and Abby, but it's it's Abby's a pretty um, competitive character, and and she will definitely go for it hundred percent all the time. And and there's um, it's just nice to have someone that we can just bring from home that just steps into the boat so easily, and that helps both of us so that we can go, I can go onto the bow knowing everything's under control at the back and, and we can get around the course pretty pretty well with the three of us. And how does it help you, Ben, with your knowledge of your, your normal job in the middle, um, having, having done the bow? Because um, your dad was just was talk, talking about how useful it is to share the roles around. Yeah, it's... Um, being able to do downwind, for example, the wind calls and stuff like that, and I'm relaying to the middleman what what the picture is around and to the helm. That's there's um I found there's quite an emphasis on that, and it's 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 quite difficult initially when you start like looking around and and seeing where the dirt is and where the clear air is. So it sort of gives you a bit of appreciation for what what the guys are looking for when they tell you yeah pressure on the left coming towards or or a nice gap in the fleet and the pressure's coming down it may you can paint that picture when they tell you a bit easier and Stuart when you get into other people's roles um how disciplined are you all about sticking to those roles and, and not uh coaching each other about oh I, I would steer it differently or I'd put the pole on in a different way how, how good are no. you at staying within role I think it's it's really important that we do that um, because otherwise it just becomes a you know goes to custard so quickly if if we don't stick to our roles and and part of what we're doing with Ben I and Roger or Andy is uh, developing specific roles so 
to drop into a different role. Um, it, it's important when we, we change roles, but it, but it also just creates the awareness of what the role is. So when you're, you're, you're doing a role as such, you, you've really got to focus and, and bring the, you know, the activity or the information to the team so the boat can perform. And, and with Abby coming on board, she's a very good helm and, and, you know, she responds well to, you know, if we just say we want to sail a slightly higher mode here for a bit to push someone off and, and then be able to tack ourselves, she'll, she'll, she's got a good understanding of what that, that requires. And through the communication on the boat, by just changing our trim mode slightly, we're able to do that. And, and we're all you know, through talking, we're able to just change and manipulate the boat through the water to do, do what we need it to do to be able to do our tactical uh, strategy, fulfil that. Now, you've mentioned uh, two others, uh, Roger and Andy. Uh, just tell us more about them. So, so Roger, that's Roger Marino. You've sailed with Roger um, many years ago and had great success yeah. with him. So tell us a little bit about Roger and, and what he brings to the team. So Roger started sailing with us um, in 2002. He, so the first World Championships we won, it was Simon Russell and um, Nick Pearson. Uh, for, then Nick uh, joined the America's Cup um, and, and sailed down in Auckland. Um, so Roger, Roger joined us, and he was his brother-in-law to uh, Simon. And um, Roger comes; he came on board as a a, um, a, a bowman and good trim, and um, just he knows he understands. We've done so much sailing; he understands how I personally like to divide the roles in the boat. We we. You know, we, we've got a good understanding and and a good a good communication line. You know, he's he, you know we don't have any chaff. We just get on and talk about what we need to talk about and do the jobs in the boat that we need to talk about or do. And um, so he 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 dropped back in for the Europeans with Ben and I, and that worked really well. Um, it was it was very enjoyable sailing sailing with Roger and he's. Uh, a very experienced sailor and in, in let's just say that this is Andy Hemmings we're talking about so yeah uh, so Andy Hemmings is a very experienced sailor um for 20 for 70 Olympic background and then several America's Cup programs trimming and and now sails regularly as a professional sailor on the um TP52s and other big boats um, so, and, and that's his primary source of income. So there's, there's sometimes a bit of a, a, a conflict there because um, Ben's inheritance doesn't quite go to, you know, competing against some of the TB52 owners. So that's where we need that flexibility as a group um, with Andy dropping in and out and um, Roger being available. The, the two, Roger, Roger and Andy bring very different, skills and the experiences to to the team as i said roger's done a huge amount of sailing with me very capable sailor and good fun to sail with andy over the um andy brings in a, a, a different sort of level of experience and, and he's great with the trim and and you know just a huge wealth of experience to help give us all confidence in what we're doing and and contributing well to to, uh, and, and enjoying sailing the actuals with us. You've been blinded by the sun here. Yeah, it's uh, it's coming and going, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So so Ben, um, what's it like? Yeah. Um, sort of helping spend your own <laughs> inheritance like this. Is it is it a good use of of, of funds that could have <laughs> otherwise have gone to help you buying a house or something? Yeah, I got a bit nervous. Um, when they start talking about budgets and everything, and maybe we need a new sale here. And yeah, I try and limit what we spend, but yeah, no, it's it's hundred percent worth it. Yeah, there's no point 
having it later on when Stuart's retired and and um, yeah, living the life we're at home and I'm there, got nothing to do or need someone to sail with me. It's well, um, perfect timing. Bearing in mind, Stuart's a similar age to me, so I, I think you're about mid fifties, aren't you, Stu? And um, I'm thinking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um john bertrand was in his 70s when wasn't he when uh he was still winning uh his last actuals yeah. world championship so so you got might have a while to go yet ben uh but but Stu, um uh yeah i mean it, you've given it quite a gap um in all those years you, you've done many other things in in sailing um what's it been like coming back to the actuals how much has it changed um it's it, first of all, it's just great fun to be able to sail with with Ben, Abby, Andy, Roger. Um, that's what it's all about for us. Um, I'm still as competitive as ever, um, and we we want to, yeah, we just want to give it our best shot and have some fun doing it. The the boats the boats have changed. Um, the fit out has has refined within the one design rule. Um, but the, the boats have changed a bit. Uh, some of the systems are easier. Um, the sails, the Australians, um, uh, it, um, Australians have developed the rigs a lot over the last, uh, particularly two or three, four years. So we we've we started off using the Australian setup this this time. We've um, been you know, just using the, the standard tuning guide, standard Australian kit. And, and that itself is quite, um, it, it's nice just to have to learn about the rigs and what's, what's, what they're using and when they're using it and why they're, you know, and why it works and, and just get the whole thing, you know, the grey matter thinking about what we're doing is, is very important. Um, we've, we've, you know, we've, things have, things always move on and, the beauty of the etchels is that there's many different ways to crack it. Um, and, and at the moment we're following a particular route that several people are following. I know in the States they're trying something different in terms of rig setups and stuff. And there'd be some people still, still using possibly what we were using eight, 10 years ago. So, um, the racing's as good as ever. And, and, um, you know, we we just to go out there with with five boats all going similar speed and similar height, um, upwind down downwind, or seventy boats is it's just great racing, isn't it? Yeah, it will be fantastic. Now, as we talk, I think we're what, about a year away from the worlds taking place, are we? Yeah. Um, yeah. So, just a bit of advice for those uh, watching this. Who are think, thinking about dipping their toe into the actuals, um, maybe not um, looking at a, a world beating campaign like you are, but j just give us your sort of tips for putting a budget campaign together, the, the, the things to watch out for in terms of what kind of boat you might buy, how much you should obsess about the rigs, um, or how much um, you should obsess about well, other things like the team that you build. Yeah, um, keep it simple. Um, be really clear on your objectives in, in terms of let's set things out um, with the sailing program. Be be very open and honest to where where you are at the moment in in relative terms to the rest of the fleet, um, and and just go about a nice steady program of put the time in, but working out what you need to do. Break it down into small chunks. Put, put the put the effort in and, and the focus around different elements of it and gradually bring all those elements together to um, you know be able to sail the boat well with three or four people um, there's there are good secondhand boats around and the nice thing about the actuals you could be pretty competitive in a good secondhand boat we're, we're not having to pay too much relatively for, for a good secondhand boat um, and just put new sails on and unfortunately the new sails always make a difference um, there's two builders 
active at this time as, as the thorny subject of the Australian builder and Mould 11 boats, which we won't go, go there at the moment. Um, but the Heritage, David Heritage, and um, the Ontario boats um, built in Canada and Heritage in Cows, um, two, you know, out of the box, two really good options for, for teams coming into it. And very quickly, you'll, you'll get a sense of the North or Doyle tuning guide and, and just sail by the numbers. And, and the sooner you can sail a boat without having to look up at the rig every five minutes, sooner you start looking at boat-to-boat situations and the wind, and you start sailing the boat through your hands and not your eyes, your, your results are going to start going up very quickly. We, we found that the first three or four months, new team, new rig setup and everything, we were very inward looking at the rig and the boat and what we were doing in the boat. And it's once we had, had that feel for the boat and we, we started to understand the controls and what, what we could do as a team, um, our focus gradually spread out of the boat onto the race course. And, and you know, that came together particularly for us at the Europeans where we, we showed good speed um, and, and, you know, good tactical decisions just by keeping our head out the boat. And Ben, how many world championships have you competed in so far? Um, a couple in lasers. Um, and then I'm at one now. I'm at the Rolex Maxi Worlds at the moment. And what, what are you not- doing there? What, what, what job are you doing on which boat? I'm on Galatea. I'm in the forward pit. Um, sailing the boat we had a good day today we managed to win which was excellent and I think we're it's all quite close at the top so we've got a lay day tomorrow and then Saturday's the last day so we're all in for Saturday um, and what, yeah, what, um, what do you what do you learn from sailing in the big boat world sur- surrounded by um, fully paid full-time professionals how important communication in the boat is that's, that is one thing that I've taken away from here. That it is, there's, you can have all the best guys in the world, but if the front aren't speaking to the back or the back aren't speaking to the front, and um, not if everyone isn't on the same page, the boat just doesn't go around the course quickly. And that, that, that is one thing that Dad pointed out that we, we, we're still learning how to sail the boat, but we got, we've, We've got a bit more confidence in the boat now. So now we can start to go heads out and, and actually look around and, and start to sail the fleet a bit more and, and be able to do that instead of, oh, we seem a bit slow here and everyone's heads in the boat, not looking at the major shift on the right or the new pressure filling in from the left. Um, that is the one key thing, I think, sailing in the Wonders on fleet that is... The um yeah, doesn't matter if you're really quick, if you go completely the wrong way. Um, Stuart, I I know that the the thing that would make you happiest at an actuals world championship would be if you won it. I'm pretty sure that's the case, but you can put me right on that because what we can't all go to a world championship with the expectation of winning because. Um, by its very nature, all but one of those teams is going to end up disappointed. So just give us a sense of the other reasons why you do a world championship. Um, For me, this was an opportunity to sail with Ben and Abby, get them involved and and just pass on some of my own knowledge. So from our own perspective, we're not not going out there with the sole purpose to win a world championship. It's about learning to sail together, having some fun sailing a, a good boat together. And, and if we put ourselves in a position where we can finish in the top 10, well, that's something to be really, you know, proud of as a, as a team, Ben, I, and, and the third person. Um, it, it's, that's quite special to have competed at that sort of level and, and succeeded. And, and just, you know, the, we all have lots of information of how to do things and we learn um, the important, 
the important thing I found is being able to import, impart that information. And you can't do that necessarily around the kitchen table. Um, it's, it's a very special opportunity to be able to sail with your kids in a, in a competitive fleet um, in the same boat. And just, if, you know, we're always imparting knowledge about the wind and the current and the, what's happening with the boats. It's just a constant chat. And, and that's quite special. And, and hopefully that will stand them in good stead in the future as well. Well, great to have you both on the call. And I'm so excited for you, Ben, that you're experiencing the big boat scene as well. And, and let's see where that takes you. Um, and it's a great testament to the Etchells fleet that it, you keep on coming back and spending your kids' inheritance on it, Stuart. It, <laughs> it speaks volumes for the appeal of the Etchells. So I, I'm, I'm sorry about that for you, Ben, but at least you're helping your dad spend it with him yeah, so, <laughs> <laughs> i'll spend abby's as well oh no i'm sure yeah. you will i'm sure you'll be yeah definitely the trailer is coming out of her part yeah um <laughs> but yeah. Uh, guys thank you very much i've, I've really enjoyed talking to you and I, I wish you um all the best for the coming season and for the world championships in particular thank you bye for thank now thank you andy